Well, welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Open Opinions. I do believe this is actually Open Opinions either six or seven. Shit, I'm already to a point where I have no fucking clue what episode I'm on. Uh, but nonetheless, welcome back, guys. I know it's been about five or six days since I've actually gotten anything on the channel. Uh, early this week, I had a couple of, like, things, family things to take care of. And then the last couple days, if I'm just being 100% completely honest with you guys, I have just been in a fucking funk. I've, I've been in this headspace of what I can only really describe as feeling stuck. And this is something that... Honestly, I've experienced a lot in my life, and it, I go through periods, and it, it's almost like little depressive states, and I think that a lot of people in depressive states really will understand this feeling of feeling stuck, and what I mean by that is, like, I feel like there's a lot of times in everyone's life, and this is, this is a feeling that I know I've struggled with, so hopefully this is something that I will be able to kind of talk through, not only for my own sake, but also to maybe give you guys some advice of how to get the fuck out of that stuck spot or whatever it is. And for maybe people who haven't experienced, like, the, the stuck states, what I mean by that is, like, there's this a lot of times in your life that you're going to find you're working really hard. You're doing everything that you think you're supposed to. You know, you're getting all your tasks done. You're doing all your shit. And you're just watching things pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up and not get taken care of. Like... There's a lot of times in your adult life, especially if, if you're dealing with, you know, relationships and finances and, and all that stuff, that you're really going to struggle with this sense and state of feeling stuck no matter what you're doing. And unfortunately, this is an entirely self-created state. And we are the only people that can actually get us the fuck out of that state. But <clears throat> Let's dive a little bit more into this actual feeling and, and what this feeling really honestly is, what we want to go through when we're feeling this feeling. Because for a lot of people that, that do use substances, unfortunately, this is the time in life that uh, unhealthy relationship can develop with substances. As when you're in this stuck state, when you're in a, a stuck feeling and you're feeling like you're doing everything you can in your power to, to, to possibly get yourself out of that state, it, it envelops you with an overwhelming just feeling of powerlessness. Like you're doing what you're supposed to or you're doing what you deem you're supposed to and nothing is coming to fruition. Nothing's happening. It's, it's just the same fucking shit, different day. It's like you're in that Groundhog's Day movie, but life's awful every day. And... In depressive states, unfortunately, like, this stuck feeling in this stuck state is actually what breeds a lot of suicide, as you feel like there is no getting better, getting out of this state. There is no changing it. And unfortunately, the nature of what the state itself breeds can literally push people down that path, because a lot of people in the state of stuck and helpless and feeling like that, hopeless you're not really rationally viewing the situation as a lot of this, like I said, is, is fraught with mental illness. It's in depression. It's in chemical imbalances and stuff. And it's something that you really don't have immediate control over and you, until you can recognize that it is a power almost outside of you. And a lot of the, the hopeless stuck feeling, like I said, it breeds really unhealthy, either uh, abusive states for people or depressive states, suicidal states, like, it does not itself breed healthy life. And the stuck state is like a, a, a cycle of stuckness almost, because you feeling stuck usually breeds these feelings of, you know, like, inadequacy or, or, or self-doubt or, or confidence issues, and you stop doing what you know you're capable of. And that's really when the stuck thing starts having a, a negative impact on your entire life. And this is something that I directly, I experienced this months ago. Like, my feeling of feeling stuck bred an inherently extremely unhealthy mentality that made me just want to detach, that made me just want to smoke, that made me want to drink at night. Like, it, it was an extremely unhealthy dynamic that very quickly I watched ruin a lot of aspects of my life, like relationships, even finances, like, and, and, and I think a lot of the state that the stuck feeling is, is being like, why did I do this? Why did I not do that? 
it's it's a lot of it is fraught with regret and past decisions, past choices. Instead of moving forward, your brain is wanting to be like, why did this happen? Why did I have to go through this? This is bullshit. I tried so hard. I was trying so hard this entire time. And your brain is not trying to lead you down the path of getting out of it. It's just continuing you down the path of detachment of, and this is, this is something you find in like AA and in a lot of, uh, you know, alcoholism or just like drug addiction courses is you need to take personal self responsibility for your past, all your actions, own up to them, but move forward because the life you're living today is the life you're living today. It's the life you're afforded. You woke the fuck up today. <laughs> That's like a really, 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 really important thing to hold on to is that you are alive. You do have the choice and, and the option right now to change whatever it is. And a lot of, like I said, the stuck mindset breeds a feeling of I can't do this. I'm incapable. And, and you start detaching from the truth and the reality, which is you're very capable of getting unstuck. Everyone gets stuck in their life. Every single person. Realistically, our adult life is a series of fucking up and then trying to figure out how to fix that fuck up to move on and build a better life. Like, that is a very natural part of life. And when you're in the depressive states, when you're in mentally unwell states, that's not something you can rationalize and a scope you can, a lens you can view things through. You just see things suck. I don't feel good today. I'm struggling right now. I'm going to get high. I'm going to drink. I'm going to do X substance, whatever it is. Xanax is a huge one for people that want to detach because it makes them not feel feelings. Like, they're numb. That's why you see a lot of, like, the rapper community that's dealt with, like, you know, a lot of abuse in their life or a lot of troubles through their hard upbringing end up on substances like, you know, Henny, like alcohol, or Xanax. It's because they're drowning pains from their past instead of, you know, trying to work through them or overcome them. And this is all kind of, I think, tied directly into mental health, in my opinion, as, uh, yes, this is, this is an aspect of mental health that needs to be looked at as the stuck mentality and the stuck feeling that a lot of us go through on a pretty consistent, normal basis. A lot of us don't have healthy means of outlay or outpour. We don't have healthy outlets. <laughs> like, our outlets are, are smoking up fuck ton of weed until everything's okay or they're drinking until everything's okay and that's not what we need to be for the sake of our own progression and growth and actually getting unstuck be doing because if you keep going down that path of of abuse of whatever substance it is or you know detachment in whatever way you detach even video games some of us just play a shit ton of video games to detach from life that is okay sometimes but not always, as what ends up happening is you breed a state of detachment. And, and unfortunately, in life, we need these states of stuckness. We need these states of sadness. We need these states of struggle because there's a yin and a yang to life. We need the bad to really actually appreciate the good, to see the good, to not get caught in the good, and to, to recognize the good. So... What happens is when we're only detaching from the negative, harmful, sad states, we're not living in them and we're not rationalizing them. So we're seeing life from a disconnected lens of, of just reality. When you only look at the positives and you only detach from the negatives, the positives aren't as positive. The positives become less important. They hold less weight. And it just breeds a, a dynamic of never feeling like there's enough, never feeling you're always chasing a high and you're always living a life that's having to be on this or with this instead of just enjoying this, enjoying this. Like life itself is really hard for a lot of us. Our upbringings, not everyone had easy ones. <laughs> A lot of us had really fucking hard upbringings. And that's what makes us us. And I'm not saying that people who didn't have tough, rough upbringings or, or haven't had past fraught with shit 
aren't great people or characterly great people or didn't, you know, adapt to be the person they are, they did the same way. But if you've gone through pain and you've dealt through pain and you've, you've, you've actually experienced a past, then you have to be okay with that. And you have to come to terms with that instead of feeling like it's unfair. You can't be like, well, why did they get a better life? Why did they get a better? Why did they? We're too outside of ourselves. And we're trying to be outside of ourselves because we're not okay with ourselves a lot of the time. And that's especially people who haven't gone through counseling and gotten that scope. Um, but it's important to come to terms with you and come to terms with overall this really fucking important mentality. You are responsible for your life. There's going to be shitty people that are going to do shitty things at specifically your expense. People are going to hurt you. People are going to fuck you over. There is going to be negative things and people in your life. But guess what? There's one thing you can control. Your reaction. How you adapt. And how you overcome to those things. And characterly just giving in and and being like, ah, fuck, I got fucked over, time to fuck everyone else over. A lot of the world does that. They're just like, well, I got abused, time to abuse the world. Or I got fucked, time to fuck the world. And that literally will create a continual cycle of abuse and of pain and of hurt and of sadness and of feeling stuck and of resent. It's just that entire path is horribly, unbelievably negative. So... I guess the long kind of wraparound to all of that was the resentful mindset of like, oh, I'm stuck. I can't believe I didn't do this and I can't believe I couldn't. I wish I could have stopped living in the past. Learn from your past. Don't live in it. Living in your past creates basically depression. And living too far in your future creates anxiety because you start worrying about shit. Live right now. With the obvious realization that you were built through all of your experiences, everything that you've lived has made you you. But don't take that as a negative thing. Don't be like, well, I did this so I can justify this negative action. Or I lived through this so I can justify that I'm fucked up or whatever. Like, try to be the best you you can. If you got fucked over, be the better person. Be the bigger person. Be the person that's like, hey, I'm stepping up and and I'm going to be the one that I might have gotten fucked over a thousand times, but I'm going to be the first person who doesn't fuck over the next person. Because that's what actually gets us out of this super mentally ill cycle of blaming the world for our problems, blaming other people for our problems, when we're the only ones that can really fix them. And I'm not saying you can't rely on other people. It's very important to have counselors, to have therapists, to have friends you can talk to about every situation and get different angles as it will kind of rationalize what you are thinking. It will make you maybe feel not so crazy on things that have happened to you. And it's important to just get those words out to another person. Um, But it's also very important to realize that it's not reliant on them. It's always reliant on us. It's it's personal self-responsibility that gets us out of these stuck states. And sometimes the stuck state is a personally, you know, uh, I'm not going to say really personally like put on, like you didn't do it to yourself. It was probably mental illness. But it's a state that you're perpetuating. It's a state that you're just sitting in that you, because you don't know how, because you've never been shown how, you just deem that it's either not possible or that that state's going to exist forever when it's not true. Like that, that state is, is, is very, very, very easily gotten out of. I, I can't say easily. It's easy when you start trying though, because it's a day by day by day by day by decision by decision by decision process. If you're feeling stuck, your first decision should not be to hide from the stuck feeling. Your first decision should be to stand that stuck feeling right in the fucking eyes, stare it in the eyes, stand up to it, and and try to overcome it. Try to fucking beat it down. Because it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, and you're going to feel more and more stuck if you don't take the chance and the opportunity to just face it. 
And it's a really hard thing to do. Facing our past is, is for me, was one of the hardest things that I've, I've dealt with in a long time. Like, I also realized, though, if I didn't face my past, I would still be in that stuck state, hurting people around me, just being a gross human that wasn't me. I, I lost myself. I wasn't here. I wasn't me. And I was losing myself by the day. And the decision that helped me find myself again and, and get back to a place of mental health is, is standing up to it and facing it. And like I said at the beginning of this episode, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, it's not like it's something that just changes immediately. I still wake up a couple days a week depressed. I still wake up really fucking struggling. I've been feeling really fucking stuck this week. The only difference between now and the past is I didn't consume excess alcohol or just smoke a fuck ton of weed. I sat through these issues and I sat down with myself and like, yes, there was times where I smoked a little bit of weed, kind of did like some yoga and self meditation to, to get through and navigate the paths of my brain. But it was never, oh, I'm going to smoke to forget about this. I'm going to smoke to not feel this. You need to feel it. It's not always going to be fun. This is the same with all emotions though, with negative emotions, with positive emotions, you need to face them and overcome them, talk with them, feel them, and move on. Because when you drown them, they're going to come up. And that that fucking, <laughs> that drowning is not going to be a, a, a little puddle of water that you have to walk through. It's going to be a thousand thoughts that hit you all at the same time that literally drown you. So don't put off thinking through things. <laughs> it's It's simple but really important, guys. Well, this is a super quick episode. I don't even think we hit 20 minutes, honestly. I think we're at like 16, 17 minutes, but that's really, honestly, all I really have uh, to talk on today. So I am, this next week, going to be doing a series on uh, tolerance breaks and just like my overall tolerance break experience on the channel. So I'm probably actually going to be starting on Friday, going from Friday to Friday, so like seven straight days of no cannabis consumption, and I'm also going to be very straightforward about the effects and shit that are being felt, as a lot of people kind of don't, they downplay them. They don't really, <laughs> they don't really, like, actually talk about the withdrawals and stuff that are felt when you stop consuming cannabis as a long-term consumer. So, that'll be the next episode, but uh, thank you guys very much for actually coming and stopping through today's episode. I definitely hope maybe if this was something that spoke to you, you were able to get a little bit of help from it. I mostly just wanted to be my own therapist today and get this the fuck out of my head. So if this could actually help any of you guys, that makes me feel a thousand million billion times better about it. But uh, I love y'all. Stay positive. Stay medicated. Peace, friends. <laughs>